Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. I've got company today. John from the Appalachian Channel is here with me and he does a lot of videos about places around our area. Um, old country stores, different businesses, a lot of the antique shops he goes in and just a lot of other stuff. If y'all are looking for something to do over the weekend, maybe check out his channel because you could probably find something to do on his channel. Well, we do have a lot of Appalachian history and culture and uh, mom and pop type stores and uh, just love uh, documenting uh, kind of a travel destination channel. People kind of watch some of the places we film that's open to the public and they like to go visit them a lot of times. There's a lot of places here in your home county of uh, Claiborne County. We've mm -hmm. been here quite a bit. We've done a whole series called Greasy Holler Memories. Oh. <laughs> kind of on the other side of the lake here yeah. from you. but. Uh, Ralph, he's 97 years old now, so he used to run an old general store, and I've done 35 videos with him. So, uh, and Frosty Freeze up, up in uh, Tazzle. Or, yeah. And uh, the Walmart just not long ago. We I that saw one. the Walmart one. Yeah. So we yeah. met you the first time over at Picker's Paradise. Yep. I was in there looking for some casserole dishes. Everybody asks where my stuff comes from. Most of it is from flea markets and yard sales and um, antique shops and my kids will find it and then I have folks send me stuff like this dish was a gift from a viewer so Miss Vanessa sent me that. Yep and you bought uh you was on that video we didn't know who you were at the time it's like <laughs> we're like we're we asked you we're filming if it's okay we film you for the video and you yeah. said well, well I got a YouTube channel too then <laughs> then after you left we realized you really had a YouTube channel <laughs> As we get people to tell us that, so you know that you know about everybody has a YouTube channel, but sometimes they don't have but a handful of subscribers. And then when mm -hmm. I looked at it and told Jody, I said she's got over eight hundred thousand subscribers. <laughs> and uh, well, it didn't happen overnight. <laughs> so <laughs> folks that want to do it and you know think maybe it's not happening, give it time. You know, it's a. I think it's a good living. It's an interesting living. It's not something that I ever thought I'd be doing. I don't know about you, but when, you know, when I was in school on career day, they didn't say, hey, you can be <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it wasn't even internet. <laughs> so no. They had some computers and uh, well, maybe typewriters. I, I yeah, learned about, they didn't, I don't even think they had computers when I was in school. So they, some years later they came out. But, uh, uh, they, well, I remember taking a computer class right out of high school at a community college and it was called Computers Today. And they had a mainframe computer and then the monitors and stuff and the mainframe computer was in a room about three times the size of this house and oh, it yeah. just ran the <laughs> and it wouldn't do a tenth of what a phone would do now probably not even that much <laughs> I mean, it was nothing you could write a program that prints your name on the screen <laughs> Well, for those of you that's watching from my channel, the Appalachian channel, I came here to interview Becky and see how she got started with this YouTube thing. And because uh, it's not an easy thing. And when I've, you're the first other YouTuber that I've interviewed that actually does this full time for a living. So this is exciting for me. And I, I saw one of your videos. Oh, here it is. You've got your 100,000 100, yeah. subscriber plaque, and uh, we're 27,000 away. We're at 72,000, so we're waiting well, to get this right here. And uh, Well, it might happen soon, you know, with the strike in Hollywood, folks be looking for new material to watch. So that's usually a good thing for those of us who make YouTube videos, because we're not on strike, folks. If you're looking for something new to watch, <laughs> go to YouTube. <laughs> I didn't think about that. That's yeah, a good point. Well, uh, it is. And um, a lot of people talk about how m much it grew during the pandemic. Yes. Because, and they, and it was really good for us because people had to learn how to cook basic stuff. People didn't know how to cook because everything was closed. But even more than that, we got a lot of views because people were just needed entertainment. And, you know, Hollywood was shut down then. Mm. Well, they shut it down again. So... And this time it's not as bad for everybody. <laughs> so we, you know, we're not looking for anything bad to happen so that we get more views, but because they are on strike and there's nothing new, no new TV shows, no new even talk shows. So let's back up and tell us how this came about. What, who encouraged you to put your first video on YouTube? My husband. Your husband. And it was all totally his idea. He was, 
really into the short films. He wanted to do short films and go to the short film festivals and he had some health problems. So everybody in the family kind of got behind him. You know, it was like a therapy thing when we would make these silly little short films. And for years, like five years, it was a daily thing. You need to be doing cooking videos on YouTube. And he's, you need to be doing cooking videos on YouTube. Kept telling me that. And he would pull up different videos and show them to me and I'd watch them. And we were snowed in on Valentine's Day in 2014. And I, and he started again and I was like, fine, I'll make snow cream. And I was being a little smart aleck. I was gonna do it, nobody's gonna watch it. And I can get back to my life. <laughs> You know? Just to satisfy so, him. Just to satisfy him. So he's, you know, he wasn't feeling great that day. So he was setting up the channel while I was getting ready to video. And I set it up and I videoed it all serious. You know, don't get any yellow snow. And <laughs> and also, you know, don't go up under trees and stuff. You want a nice, because you don't want to get stuff tripped out of trees in your snow cream. Got to have nice clean snow. And brought it in and finished it up and he's like what are we gonna call this channel and I said well he'll be the kitchen and that too was just a joke you know it was but it fits <laughs> I mean <laughs> that's, so he's like oh well, I like that so he sets it up puts that video up and it got like 200 views and it was a brand new channel brand new video and 200 views in the first day you know that's something for a brand new channel so then I was up a creek. <laughs> it sure didn't stop. So I did two or three more videos and we let it sit for a little while and maybe two or three weeks and came back and looked and a thousand people had watched me make a pot roast. Yeah. And I called all the kids, you ain't gonna believe this thousand people watched me make a pot roast. Well then I was really, you know, so. Got encouraged from that. We kept making them for a while and um, one of our daughters, our oldest daughter, opened up a little store down the valley. It was called Yesteryear Country Market. It was kind of like the Amish stores, only we obviously are not Amish, but same um, products that, that they sell. And we had a lot of Amish products in there, all of our deli meat and stuff. So we worked, went down and helped them work, and I worked in the deli for like three years, making sandwiches and tater salad. And people started coming in. And we had about 30,000 subscribers when we went down there and started helping them. And they were like, please make more videos. You know, I, you have no idea how much it means to me to turn on YouTube and listen to your videos. And when I feel lonely, I just listen to you talk. And I'm like, so I thought about that a while. And, you know, more and more people came in. And then um, before the year before we started doing it full time in November, we had a big jump from November and in the December, we jumped from 30,000 to like 65,000. What year would this have been, about 2019? Uh, that would have been 2019 or 2018, probably 2019. Yeah. So, you know, it went on along and toward the spring and he wasn't doing good and it was just, you know, that was a hard job. I don't know if you've ever worked retail in that kind of a store. I mean, you just run from the time you get there till the time you leave. I didn't sit down for Cooking or cleaning? Or, yeah, something all the time. And uh, in the middle of the day one day, I said, let's go home. I said, you know, let's, let's just go do videos. And uh, he was like, are you sure? Because at the time, we were making $400 a month. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yep, God's going to bless it. People want to see it. Let's go home. So we came home and we kind of dedicated it to the Lord and there's at least a verse in every video, if not more than just a verse. And um, we share verses about hope and love and try to keep people encouraged. And a lot of people have asked me, why don't you, if you look at the Bible, there's way more verses about judgment or God's wrath or like, you know, there's so much bad in the world. Somebody has to be a light. And it can't all be about the bad. And Jesus said he comes to be a light. He came to save the world, not to condemn it, but to save it. So if as Christians we're going to be a light and we're going to share that, we have to be a light, especially in the last three or four years. It has just, well, you live here, you know what things are like. And people need some hope. So that's what we do. Well, that's uh, really an encouraging uh 
coming from you going through losing your husband too a few years ago and then still being able to encourage other people on top of well, going through that, that so it was takes a, a lot September of 2021 and it definitely changed life yes I'm sure it did things I mean he had been sick for a long time and you know you kind of expect it but you don't expect it at the same time you yeah. know it was a so at that point, did you kind of feel like giving up on the channel, or what? What was your? I thoughts? was for a couple of days. I sat here and I, I don't even know if it was a couple of days. I was trying to decide what I was going to do, and he said, you know, if you just put up one video a month, he said you can edit one video a month. Just put up one video a month, and you'll be all right. You, you know, it'll keep making money. It ain't, you know, it, obviously, you know, it's like you said, stoking a fire. You have yeah. to keep putting videos up. <laughs> it goes up and drops down and goes up and drops down. But um, he said, if you just keep putting up a video a month, it'll continue to get views and you can just go live your life. And he had said that. And I thought, well, I can edit. I can figure out how to do that. But then I was thinking, what am I going to do? Because that means I work at home alone. And I am alone, and that's not going to work. And my daughter Alex came in. We were still planning the funeral, and she she was working as a lineman at a local internet company, which is not an easy job. And they had her doing a supervisor job, paying her for a lineman's job. <laughs> and they were calling her while we were planning his service, and she was in tears because they wouldn't leave her alone. They were wanting her to go out on an outage. And I said, quit and come to work for me. And she's like, I can't take your money. And I said, I need an editor. I don't want to work alone every day and live alone every day, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I need an editor. And she kept going on and I sat her down and I said, look, it's making enough money to pay your salary. How much do you make? I'll match what you make. Commit it for me. So. Now I gotta keep doing them because I have to pay her. <laughs> but that's uh... so it's been uh, quite an experience. I know we we'll talked to you a little bit on the phone about when you're out in public and people uh, recognize you. And I know from my video when people was watching my video, they're like, "There's Becky from the Hillbilly Kitchen." That's crazy. <laughs> they was like tripped out that they now you just show up, pop up in the middle of the video. <laughs> well, it's uh. It is different. I'm kind of getting used to it, and I expect it now. People will, I'll see people point at me, and they'll go, you're, and I, yeah, I am. <laughs> <You> know, they, <laughs> or I'll just have people yell. You know, they'll see me and scream, and I'm like, yeah. I was, it, the, the most uncomfortable ones are always ones where they catch you coming out of the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I, that has happened more times. <laughs> You coming out of the bathroom, and I don't like the hand dryers, so my hands will be wet. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody will recognize me. I'm like, okay, I wash my hands. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it's interesting when people. It's always fun to meet people that watches your videos it when is, you're out. It's it nice is. to meet people and talk to them. Sometimes I've I've had some people write me and say. I saw you in a restaurant and mm -hmm. didn't want to bother you eating. I'm like, well, you should have came on over because mm -hmm. I, I enjoy meeting uh, people when I'm out that watch the videos. So that's always fun, that fun part of it, you know. I went to McDonald's in um, Knoxville a few weeks ago and I was get, went to the bathroom, was getting me a cup of coffee. <laughs> and I come out and this woman in a big black truck comes screaming through the parking lot, you and <laughs> And I'm like, Lord, please don't hit me. <laughs> and we talked for, I bet you, 30 minutes standing in the parking lot. So, you know, uh, yesterday, coming out of the bathroom in Kate's Cove. <laughs> Somebody goes, you're Becky from the Hillbilly Kitchen, ain't you? I'm like, yes, ma'am, I am. It's very nice to meet you. And we talked just a little while. It was too hot to stand and talk yesterday. <laughs> So let me ask you a question. I, I You know, <clears throat> as a YouTube con creators you're constantly trying to find a new recipe I'm sure so how, how do you come up with so many different uh, recipes um well I've got about I'd say probably 200 maybe 300 cookbooks I don't know they're all over the house okay. I've got cookbooks everywhere and when I go someplace whether it's if I'm traveling or if I go in an antique mall or something and I see an old cookbook or okay. Goodwill I've got a lot of cookbooks there I'll buy old cookbooks and then I've got recipes um, from a couple of my aunts have given me recipes that I've kept and I've got some of my mama's recipes and 
a lot of old cookbooks. Now, did you did you start out at a young age cooking? Did you grow up cooking, or is I this was, something that the first time I remember cooking? And I've never told this story, so this is an exclusive okay. for you. <laughs> the first thing I actually remember cooking was baked beans on the stove. You know, they used to they just use pork and beans on the stove and add brown sugar and mustard mm -hmm. and whatever to them, a little onion. Well, I certainly didn't do onion. I was three years old. I had me a little chair pushed up, and I'd say that that can of beans probably had half a pound of brown sugar in them at least. <laughs> <laughs> I put some, but that was baked beans on the stove top was the first thing I remember cooking. And I ate them, but I don't know if anybody else really enjoyed them. I can't remember. They were pretty sweet. <laughs> so you added some, added the sugar and to Yeah, it. I added plenty of brown sugar to them, but that was the first thing I remember cooking. But I remember pretty little making pancakes and... Something you enjoyed at a young yeah, age and little, kept doing it till your teenage years. Yeah. And, yeah. And I didn't think a whole lot about it, um, you know, cook for my kids when they were growing up and stuff. But one of the girls I went to high school with commented on one of my videos after it started taking off. And she said, you know, this I could have imagined for you because you were always making candy and stuff and bringing it to school. And every time I came to your house, you were cooking. And I'm like, you know, I didn't think about it, but I guess I was. Well, yeah, well, that's, but, why, that's why I was thinking, trying to ask you know, if this is mm -hmm. something that you've enjoyed for, mm -hmm. sounds like since you were three years old. Yeah, I used to love cooking with my granny and she passed away when I was 12. So oh. those are like, those were some of my best childhood oh, memories. Yeah. yeah, I'd say so. With your grandmother cooking with her and I'm sure she had some good recipes too. Oh yeah, she did. <laughs> Uh, my Aunt Dot, she was a great cook. She was like, she could make a pie out of anything and meringue, you know, this high and <laughs> all the cream pies and stuff. And I used to cook a lot with her too. Wish I'd have paid more attention to her. <laughs> so now have you, are you a native to uh, Claiborne County here? Have you always lived here or did you uh, move here? Actually, I'm from a place called Gumwalk, Georgia, from which Georgia. is in Towns County. It's right you can about throw a rock and hit Tennessee and North Carolina. So it's kind of the same deal, only at the bottom of the state instead of at the top. Now, how, what brought you to Claiborne County? Oh, gosh, that's a long story. A long time, <laughs> been a while back, probably. Well, uh, when I was a kid, we moved down to middle Georgia, and then I met Brett working. I had a cousin who worked at a Hardee's in a suburb of Atlanta. And I was working there over my Christmas break and met my husband working at Hardee's in Atlanta. Riverdale, it's down south of Atlanta there. And uh, that was a real long courtship, at least a week and a half. A week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least. But uh, it, it was quick and, you know, I was 17 and it lasted forever. Yeah, so, so yeah. ended up moving here to Claiborne County. Yeah. Uh, what year did you come here? Uh, we came to Claiborne County in, oh my goodness, 80, or what, no, it wasn't 80. It would have been 93. 93, so you've been here a while. Long time. So I'm sure a lot of people in, in Claiborne County don't realize that they have a YouTube star right here in the <laughs> county that has... Uh, my kids keep it in perspective. I'm a micro celebrity. A mi no. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> when you have uh, 120,000 subscribers and you've done over... 80 million views on your channel, it's not micro no more. <laughs> so, um, well. You've got uh, a lot of videos. It's, uh, I don't know how many, it's over a million, two million, three million uh, views. The last time I checked, I had one with like 3.8 million. 3.9 now. Oh, it's was it 3.9? Two ingredient biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that too, I did not want to do those. Oh yeah? And it, Brett was like, well, it's getting a lot of views, do them. And then the next one down is those pan biscuits mm -hmm. that I did. He didn't want me to do those. <laughs> he said, it's just a biscuit in a pan, anybody can do that. <laughs> well, apparently not. <laughs> and uh, I think the next one is that two ingredient fudge and I didn't want to do that. I said, it's not even really a recipe. And he said, just do it, just do it, just do this quick video and do it. So the top three videos we've got. Are either, simple. Yeah, and either one of us didn't want to do it. Yeah. Either he didn't want me to do it or I didn't want didn't to do it. Didn't think it would do that good yeah. until you did it, yeah. Like, we talked about that a little bit on the phone yesterday. Yeah. Some of the videos we do, we think it's going to be great, and they're not. Mm -hmm. And some of them we don't think that much about turn out to be some of our better videos. So mm -hmm. it's always a, kind of a up in the air. One of my, If I can get a, a, do an old country store, that's always good for me. That's one of my top, what my mm -hmm. channel, the people come. They love the old general stores, especially if they cook and 
and, and all that. Um, so it looks like you've got something made up here today. What'd you make up today? I made us a fresh apple cake with a brown sugar glaze on it. Oh my and goodness. And I'm gonna do that video here. That'll probably be the next one. I put up a Philly cheesesteak sloppy joe today. I just put it up while you were driving out here. Oh yeah? So we'll see how that does. And there was a time when these old recipes like this, this is a real old recipe, simple recipe, you know, flour, bacon powder, and apples and vanilla, the, you know, the basic stuff in it. There was a time when these old recipes were what got most of the views, the recipes that were over 100 years old. But then, like you were just saying, the two ingredient stuff, the simple stuff. Of course, I guess those skillet biscuits, they, the pan bread, that probably is a pretty old one, too. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I made some coffee. I thought we'd have some coffee and try this cake. Sounds good. And I just picked these apples this morning. Picked these apples? Yeah. You, grew, you grew them? They're, I got a couple uh, apple I'll, trees down the hill there. I don't think I've ever ate apples that's been cooked and picked that same day. Yep. It's, uh, I'm kind of testing this recipe on y'all. I had a recipe for this because my granny used to make it and I cannot find her recipe. So I put together about six different recipes, <laughs> which I do that a lot. Um, so if you make two of these cakes, what, what, do, what do you do with the extra cake? I mean, well, what, some I, of it will go home with Alex <laughs> and some of it will go home with Melinda. How and, about that? Uh, my youngest daughter, she does. I might have time for editing some for you. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, get free cake. I actually have a, a dish over here. I'm gonna send you some home in because you know that's yeah, that's I, what you do when folks come to visit. You send the cake home with come cake back. from Becky from the Hillbilly Kitchen, guys. This this is a this is a fat man's delight, I tell you. <laughs> we weren't expecting you to fix us anything deep. We're just coming to talk to you to see how you got started in this. Well, it was you know we like I said we were doing the the silly short films and uh, he's took most of those down and I kind of hate that but he said well they might embarrass you at some point so I'm going to get them down and I'm like honey it takes a lot more than that to embarrass me. <laughs> now there's another you have another I mean, YouTube channel that yes. you're talking about it's called yeah. uh, Brett, Becky uh, Br Brett, Brett and me. Becky and I haven't put anything up on that since he passed and we hadn't been putting stuff up on it for a little while before he did and I really want to get back to that. I was thinking maybe some of the, I told you were talking about traveling and I said, well, I really want to do a little traveling. I'd like to meet some folks, you know, that. Yeah, we talked about maybe yeah. doing a meet and greet. So maybe yeah. we can do, if y'all are watching and would like to come to a meet and greet, maybe in Cumberland yeah. Gap or somewhere we can get it set yeah. up. Let us know if you would come. Uh, to Claiborne County, which is Kentucky, Virginia, uh, Tennessee, right there together, mm -hmm. and uh, Cumberland Gap. I'm gonna start doing some videos in Cumberland Gap about Cumberland Gap, so yeah. hopefully be there some. Oh yeah, I'd say there's a lot of stuff down there you could do. Well, there's it's just a historic town, and they've got some facilities to mm -hmm. that we might could do a meet and greet in uh, there. You know, they've got a lot of different buildings and restaurants or different things, and then uh, so if you're all interested in coming to a meet and greet, let us know. We'll try mm -hmm. to maybe put something together. Yeah, we need to, I definitely need to do some stuff like that. I know people would want to meet you. I'm sure they'd <laughs> come out to, to meet you in yeah. person and, and maybe get a cookbook from you and get it signed. And if you want to do something at Walmart too, um, Terry has asked me to come out there when I get the new cookbook done. Oh, okay. And I, <laughs> I need to get to work on that. So that's how we got connected back together this time yeah. as you saw the video I did at Walmart here, that's your yeah. local Walmart. So I guess yeah. you shop there some. and. Oh, yeah. Way too much. Hey, Alex, come try this before we taste it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you get recognized in Walmart quite a bit. Quite a bit. I'd say it takes you a, a little while to get through there. Sometimes it does. I used to, <laughs> Brett used to go with me and I'd, when I met somebody, I'd take a picture and send it to him so he could put it in a video. And he'd say when he got a picture, he'd know I was going to be in there for forever. <laughs> <laughs> But he used to grumble about it because it took so long. Jody, would you like some cake? Is it okay? Okay. <laughs> well, we'll get ready to eat and we'll close this video out right here. And uh, if you want to, if you're ready to, you got anything else you want to talk about? Uh, if, I mean, if this is something y'all are interested in doing, it's possible for anybody out there. And I said, you know, I share my faith on my videos. Um, 
I believe it being yourself, like you're yourself in videos. You're just like you are any other time. Being yourself in videos is what people want. They're not looking for something scripted. The The short films that we did, I thought they were funny, but other folks didn't think they were so funny. <laughs> But the stuff that we that we did where we were just ourselves, that's the stuff that got more views. We did some uh, projects, some DIY projects, and they got way more views than the, the scripted stuff did. So what folks are looking for on YouTube, I think, is just other real people. So just be yourself. Um, it's what works. It really is. And... You know, while that strike's going on, if y'all want something new to watch, all your favorite YouTubers are still putting up videos. So <laughs> get on YouTube and watch us. We appreciate it. Um, you know, we don't have a union. <laughs> or We're all independently like employed. <laughs> yes, we are all independently employed. And we get paid when you watch. And we appreciate every single view we get. You know, some people don't understand that. That's one of the, I know you said one of the questions that they asked you, uh, I forget what you said the number one question was, but I think it was how you, how you got started. But people want to know how you make money. Mm -hmm. And it's those ads that pop up and at the beginning or during the video, and we yep. get paid a penny or so sometimes on those ads. So yep. in depending on uh, how many times it's watched, the more pennies we make. The other thing people ask is why I picked that ad to go on that video. We don't pick those ads, folks. Actually, Google picks those ads based on your searches and on your likes and your dislikes. So every person who watches every video gets different ads. It's not the same ad on the video. Like if I watch a video and John watches a video, we're not gonna get the same ad. We're gonna get different ads based on what we search for. So if you're getting ads you don't like, you can report the ads and say you don't like those ads you don't want more ads like that it really doesn't have anything to do with us or what kind of content we put up but it does depend on what they watch they yeah, know what, what they, they watch and they yeah. know what you like and that's the reason they advertise those products or if you search google's search one thing if you search mm -hmm. how to get rid of fleas on a dog the next day you're gonna have five videos on there and about how, how to get, get rid, rid of fleas, fleas on, on a dog, dog. That's exactly right. All your ads are going to be about fleas. If you search um, home improvement, you're going to get Lowe's ads and um, Home Depot ads and stuff like that. So maybe contractor ads even. So it's based on what you search. And it's based on what you talk about when you're carrying your cell phone around or you have your computer open. They really are listed. <laughs> now, they, I've heard people talk about that and say that. Yeah. They could be just talking about something. Then all of a sudden, an ad pops up on Facebook I for I swear that. I can think about it. It pops up. But that's it, called, yeah, it does. I think it, that's the alg what they call the algorithm, maybe. It picks up a, on the rhythm of what we're watching, and it knows what we got an interest in, so it keeps feeding us what we've got an interest in, either it, ads or videos. It does, but especially if you're making a phone call, and you're scrolling Facebook while you're making that phone call, really? it will pick it up what you're talking about in the conversation. Well, so, you know. Well, we're going to get ready to eat some cake, and I really want to say thank you. This has been a great honor and privilege to get to come meet Becky and be here in her kitchen and to uh, make a video with her. It's yeah. been awesome. I've had a fun time talking to John, and I got to meet his wife, Jody, who's hiding back there with Alex. <laughs> She's running camera but, today. It is nice to have other folks around because this is a kind of a solo operation. Alex comes after I'm done usually recording and edits, so I set everything up by myself. People ask that a lot too. Yeah. All the lights, all the sound, all the cameras, that's all my job. Right. Yeah. So. We, we kind of do, do a little bit of everything. You got to do it all. Mm, yep. I want to thank y'all so much for joining us Hillbilly Kitchen. Check out John's channel, the Appalachian channel. And I want to leave you with just a short verse. John 8, 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. If you don't know true freedom, get to know my Jesus. Until next time, remember to put God first. God bless you all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.